Hey, my people. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we have a rather disheartening story to share with you all. We'll be diving deep into how the Kenyan national football team, once a formidable force, suffered a shocking defeat against South Sudan, a team often considered weaker. We'll also discuss the backdrop of Kenya's impressive victory against Qatar and the allegations of corruption and match-fixing that have plagued Kenyan football. As you all know, Kenya has historically been one of the strongest teams in Africa and is currently ranked 105 in the world by FIFA. In contrast, South Sudan is ranked 164 and is one of the weakest teams on the continent. So Kenya was widely expected to easily defeat South Sudan. But in a huge upset, Kenya lost one goal to South Sudan in there. This result has led to outrage among Kenyan fans and pundits. I want to discuss the background leading up to this match, analyze what went wrong for Kenya, and look at the implications of this embarrassing loss. First, let's provide some context. Earlier last week, Kenya picked up a famous two goals away win against Qatar in a friendly match. Qatar hosted the World Cup so defeating them was a major accomplishment for the Harambee Stars. This superb win raised hopes that Kenya could make a deep run in the upcoming games. They defeated Qatar, a nation that is quickly rising in the football world. This victory sent shockwaves across the football community and gave Kenyan fans a glimmer of hope. The question is, how did a team that defeated a nation like Qatar end up losing to South Sudan? The Qatar match also came after Kenya had put together a string of good performances in recent times under their newly appointed coach. The team seemed to be gelling well and looked set for a successful 2023 campaign. Today, Kenya faced South Sudan in a crucial match. South Sudan, a nation that had been embroiled in civil conflict and had limited football infrastructure, was considered an underdog. Kenya, on the other hand, had a more established football system and talent pool. So, what went wrong? Everything seemed to be going according to plan when Kenya hosted South Sudan today. The Harambee Stars controlled possession early on and created a couple of half chances despite an early sixth-minute goal. The South Sudan players looked nervous and overawed playing away in front of the passionate Kenyan crowd. But against the run of play, South Sudan took the lead in just six minutes. The Kenyans were stunned and struggled to respond after the break. Their play became increasingly desperate and disjointed. It was a massive upset that left Kenyan fans distraught and angry. How could the team that outplayed Qatar just last week ago lose at home to lowly South Sudan? Well, in hindsight, there were a few warning signs that Kenya could be vulnerable in this match. The Harambee Stars had struggled to break down weaker opposition in their last few matches, there were also rumors of disharmony in the squad between the coach and some of the senior management. Additionally, Kenya's domestic league has been beset by match-fixing scandals lately which is suspected to be what transpired today. It was amazing how Kenyan forward Olunga got opportunities but only to mess them up. Other professional players who carry their club teams also messed up golden opportunities. Despite professional build-up, the finishing was marred by synthesized mistakes. This must be a match-fixing aftermath. So there are now serious questions regarding the integrity of some players called up to the national team and the management. Match-fixing, in particular, has been a dark cloud hanging over Kenyan football. It's a practice that undermines the integrity of the game and erodes trust among fans. There have been instances where players and officials have been accused of intentionally influencing match outcomes for personal gain, but the biggest reason for Kenya's shock defeat seems to be flat-out complacency. After beating Qatar, the players and coaches probably underestimated South Sudan and didn't prepare as rigorously as they should have. Beating a world-class team like Qatar clearly made them overconfident going into a match against one of Africa's minnows, the shambolic performance against South Sudan now leaves Kenya's future in FIFA ranking hanging on the threads. Football Kenya Federation officials have also come under fire for not doing enough to prepare the squad properly. For me, the loss highlights wider problems plaguing Kenyan football. The domestic league is beset by corruption, from match-fixing scandals to mismanagement of clubs and lack of adequate youth development. For too long, Football Kenya Federation officials have been accused of gross incompetence and failing to set up strong football structures, coaches often have to pick players based more on reputation rather than current form. The national team lacks a clear style or identity compared to top African teams like Senegal and Morocco. Uninspiring football combined with poor organization leads to humiliating results like we saw against South Sudan. Going forward, Football Kenya Federation needs major reforms to clean up the domestic league and set up transparent systems. The national team needs an overhaul to instill a strong footballing philosophy across all age grades. 
Friendly wins over mediocre opposition mean nothing if you can't back it up in competitive qualifiers. The loss to South Sudan should be a wake-up call to everyone involved in Kenyan football. If changes are not made soon, Harambee stars will continue embarrassing the football-mad nation on the big stage. I hope this defeat sparks some serious soul-searching and leads to positive changes. The potential and passion are certainly there for Kenya to become a force in African football once again. But for now, congrats to South Sudan on a historic win. As for Kenya, some deep reflection is required about how a team that conquered Qatar could succumb to one of Africa's weakest teams within a few days. Thank you for listening, please let me know your thoughts on this humiliation in the comments, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.